The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. Enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. American. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, in the Rose Bowl game on New Year's Day, Illinois upset the dope. And here he is, and he's still upset, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, for your information, I wasn't upset at all. I enjoyed the game very much. Certainly was exciting, wasn't it, Jack? Yes, sir. And what a score. <laughs> Illinois, 45. UCLA, 14. And I'll hoist 103. <laughs> that was really something, wasn't oh, it? Oh, and what wonderful seats you had, Jack. Uh, how did you get such good tickets at the last minute? Well, Don, it wasn't easy. You see, even though I was born in Illinois, I've lived in California for the past 15 years. So in order to get two tickets, I called Governor Warren. You called the governor of California? Yes, yes. He couldn't do anything for me, so he called Governor Green of Illinois. Governor Green called President George Stoddard of the Illinois University. Uh, President Stoddard got in touch with Ray Elliott, the coach. Elliott got in touch with Buddy Young. And fortunately, Buddy Young happens to be a very good friend of Rochester. <laughs> So through Rochester, I not only got two seats on the 50-yard line, but I also got a sure thing in the fourth race at Santa Anita. <laughs> Say, Don, who were you rooting for at the game? Well, Jack, I didn't want to show any partiality, so I got a seat on the UCLA side and a seat on the Illinois side. Well, Don, how could you possibly sit on both sides of the... Oh, oh, of course. <laughs> And, Don, weren't you disappointed when you weren't picked as the winning float? Huh? <laughs> well, better luck next year. Hi, Jackson. Hello, Phil. Phil, get your band ready and... Phil, what happened to your orchestra? Half of your boys are missing. Where are they? Look, Jackson, New Year's Eve was only five days ago. Give them time. Give them time. <laughs> you say, what? Leave them alone and they'll come home dragging their empties behind them. <laughs> I know, I know. But meanwhile, do the best you can with the boys. Oh, no, no. What's the matter, Jackson? Sammy, the bass fiddle player. Well, what about him? He's the best bass player in the country. I know, but look at his bass fiddle. It has six silver handles on it. <laughs> well, that's Sammy for you. If anything happens to him, you don't want us to go to no expense. <laughs> Fine. Look what he has carved on the bottom of it. R.I.P. What's that? Rest and Petrillo. Now cut that off! <laughs> and until something happens to him, tell Sammy to put down the shovel, use a bow, and blow out the candles on the music stand. Will you? Oh, uh, by the way, Phil, I saw you at the Rose Bowl game, New Year's Day. Oh, is that where I was? <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you know where you were. That was a great game, wasn't it? What about that 103-yard run that Hoist made? Confidentially, Jackson, it was longer than that, but it won't go on record. What do you mean? He picked up the ball behind his old goal line, started down the field, ran up into the stands, asked me for my autograph, told me how to spell Harris, and then went on to make the touchdown. <laughs> what? If he'd have waited for me to dot the I, they'd have nailed him on the 10-yard line. <laughs> Well, I just showed you how fast that boy is. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, everybody's here now except Dennis. Where is he? I don't know. He hasn't come in yet. Well, how can we go on with the show if the cast doesn't get here on time? Oh, Jack, don't be mad at Dennis. I happen to know something that you don't know. Don't tell me he has three shows. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jack, it isn't that. It's something you won't believe. What is it? Well, all of a sudden, Dennis got a big crush on me. A crush on you? How come? I don't know. Someone must have told him I was a girl. <laughs> 
Oh, Mary, stop kidding. Has, De has Dennis really got a crush on you? Yes, Jack, and he's so cute. Ever since last week when I danced with him in that nightclub, he's been sending me notes and little gifts. Gifts? What did he give you? Oh, lots of things. His Boy Scout knife, a bag of marbles, three Coca-Cola bottle caps filled with mud. <laughs> A ball of tin foil, a fish hook, and a stick of bubble gum. <laughs> no. Yes, and I'm worried. Why? If you see me wearing his bicycle clip, you'll know we're engaged. <laughs> well, how do you like that? And Jack, you should see the note he sent me yesterday. Dennis sent you a note? Yeah, wait a minute, I'll read it to you. Oh, it's so sweet. My darling Mary, I hope you won't think I'm silly, but I keep your picture on the wall of my bedroom. I didn't want my mother to know who I'm in love with, so I took a pencil and drew a mustache and a derby hat on you. <laughs> I think I fooled my mother because now she's in love with you, too. Well, I'll be darned. And look how he finishes. Oh. I love you madly and passionately, and will never forget the kiss you gave me when I took you home. Thanking you in advance for your next shipment, I remain... <laughs> <laughs> I remain yours truly, Dennis Day. Well, that's the cutest letter I've ever heard. Let's see that. Mary, why has Dennis got the stamp pinned on the envelope? Oh, that. <laughs> he says that ever since he fell in love with me, he won't let anything else touch his lips. <laughs> well, gee, he must be hungry by this time. Huh? That's her. Shh, quiet. Here he comes now. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Don. Hiya, kid. Hello, Phil. Hello, Dennis. Dennis, I said hello. Mary, don't make it so obvious. <laughs> obvious? All I said was hello. I know, but look how you're trembling. <laughs> Dennis, you're imagining things. She's not trembling. What are you trying to do, break us up? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to break you up. Say, Mary, come here a minute, will you? I want to look at you. All right, Dennis. Gee, gosh. Well, what is it, Dennis? You look so much better without a mustache. <laughs> Dennis, what about the derby? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. <laughs> I didn't mean that. But anyway, kid, I know how you feel. When you're in love, everything is bright and sunny and cheerful. Your heart overflows with goodness. You feel nice towards everybody. Say, Jackson, did you hear about Fred Allen being voted the best comedian on the air? <laughs> there will be a short pause while Dr. Jekyll becomes Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Mary, it doesn't bother me at all. Anyway, I read about Fame magazine selecting Allen as the greatest comedian on radio. What a choice. What's the matter with you, Jackson? Every time Fred Allen gets an award, you get mad about it. Two years ago, you got mad because they put his picture on the cover of Time. Bill, Fred's face was on the cover of Look. It was on the cover of Time. It was on the cover of Look. His face represented Time. <laughs> that burns me up. All right, all right. So he's not as pretty as I am. But you've got to admit he's got a great radio show. Some great show. Comes on and jabbers for a few minutes, then he calls... Portland, 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 Portland. For the first four years, people thought he was a conductor on a Greyhound bus. <laughs> Come on, Dennis, let's have your song. Okay.
that was I Love You for Sentimental Reasons sung by Dennis Day, and very good, Dennis. Yes, Dennis, I've never heard you sing so well. That's because I'm in love. With me? It ain't your sister, babe. Woo, woo, woo! <laughs> Dennis, behave yourself. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present... Now, oh, excuse me. Come in. Well, Mr. Kitzel, what are you doing here? Uh, pardon the intrusion, Mr. Benny, but I came over to thank you for the Christmas present you sent me and to wish you a happy new year. <laughs> Well, well, the same to you, Mr. Kitzel. So you like the sweater I sent you, eh? I have never in my life owned such a beautiful slop over. No, 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 Mr. Kitzel, you mean slip over. Slop over, I mean, it's too big. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, why didn't you return it? Well, I like it that way because it makes me look like a hep cat. A hep cat? Hey, Baba Reba. Zippity doody. Hey, Baba Reba. Hey, Baba Reba. I know, I know. Do uh, uh, you also know the song about the cement mix, Master? Yes, yes, yes. And, Mr. Kitzel, I'm glad my present suited you so well. Yes, you know, I liked it so much, I started needing a pair of stockings to match the sweater. You did? Yes. But a funny thing happened. While I was sitting in the rocking chair, my wife came in and saw me knitting. Uh-huh. She got all excited and thought we was going to have another baby. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. By the way, Mr. Kitzel, as long as you're here, would you like to sit down and uh, hear the rest of the program? Oh, I'm sorry, but I got to leave. Oh, you should stay, Mr. Kitzel, because tonight our guest star is Lauren Bacall. Lauren Bacall? Who, who, who? <laughs> who, who what? Who, who's going? I'm going to stay. Well, good, good. <laughs> but, Don... Don, Don, you're mistaken about Lauren Bacall. She won't be here tonight. Oh, why not? Never mind. We haven't got time to discuss it. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Tell him what happened, Jack. Mary, we've got a program to do. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Anyway, Don, the oh. trouble started after you left the rehearsal yesterday at Jack's house. Jack's house, Jack's house. <laughs> Lauren Bacall hadn't showed up as yet to rehearse her part. And Phil and Dennis and I decided to stick around and play a little gin rummy. So we went in the den... And Say, Jack, where are you and Lauren going to rehearse? In the library. Then we can stay here in the den and play cards, can't we? Yep, that's all, that'll be all right. Rochester, will you bring in a deck of cards, please? Yes, sir. What, shall I, what cards shall I bring? The red backs or the blue backs? Oh, it doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does. The reds are 40 cents, the blue's 50. <laughs> bring them a deck of cards. They won't quibble about the price. Now, come on, Rochester. I want you to go in the library with me and help me get things ready. Yes, sir. Now, Rochester, uh, I want to make a good impression on Miss Bacall, so see that there's a nice fire burning in the fireplace. Move the uh, divan so it'll be nice and cozy in front of the fire. Uh, turn the lights down low, turn on the phonograph, and put on some nice, soft, romantic music. Want me to burn some incense and fan you with a palm leaf? <laughs> No, no, that won't be necessary. Now, let's see. I think these horn-rimmed glasses make me look a little too old. I guess I'll take them off. Uh-oh, boss. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Remember what happened the time Miss Ann Sheridan came over to rehearse with you and you took off your glasses? Oh, nothing happened. When Miss Sheridan came in, you rushed over to where you thought you saw her, put your arms around the bridge lamp, kissed the parrot, and said, Why, Annie, you bit me! <laughs> That's because it was dark. Now, let's see. Oh, that must be Miss Bacall now. Rochester, you answer the door. I want to sit down and make myself look alluring. I mean, relaxed. Uh, there, uh, how do I look? Fine, boss, but aren't you overdoing it with that rose in your teeth? <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Ramona Benny. <laughs> the rose is for my lapel. Oh, answer, answer the door. Answer. Yes, sir. 
Is Mr. Benny at home? Yes, come right in, Mr. Cole. <laughs> oh, uh, Rochester, uh, who is it? Miss Lauren Bacall. Well, Lauren Bacall. <laughs> you were expecting maybe Mrs. Nushbaum? <laughs> Uh, Rochester, you can get lost now. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, come in, Lauren. Uh, this is in flesh a deeter. I mean, indeed, a pleasure. <laughs> uh, make, uh, uh, make yourself comfortable. Sit down. No, thanks. I'll just lean here against the door. Gosh, Lauren. Seeing you there reminds me of your first picture, the have and have not. You were leaning against the door. Just like that. And then you said your famous line. You mean, if you want anything, just whistle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren, shall we, uh, shall we start rehearsing? No hurry, no hurry. You got a cigarette? A cigarette? Yes, yes, yes. Here you are. Thanks. Match? Match. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, Lauren, that uh, cigarette I gave you is a lucky strike. I know, and it's my favorite brand, too. Really? Yes. They're so round, so firm, so fully packed. <laughs> so free and easy on the draw. Gee, Effie Boone never sounded like that. <laughs> Gosh, Lauren, I, I can just picture you in a bathing suit holding up that big tobacco leaf. <laughs> and you know, Lauren, lucky strikes are made of that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Well, what do you know? And I thought Mother told me everything. <laughs> well, live and learn. <laughs> you must have learned a lot. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, now, let's start rehearsing. Here's your script. We're going to do a sketch based on your picture, to have and have not. You'll play the same part you did in the picture. Okay. Well, let's start. I'll take the uh, first line. <clears throat> Wait a minute, Jack. I'm supposed to lean against the door. Oh, yes, yes. I... <laughs> yes, I, I'm sorry. Well, we'll start again. <clears throat> You're sore at me, aren't you, Slim? Sure, Steve. I'm sore at you. I wanted to get even. I brought that bottle of brandy up here to make you feel cheap. But I'm the one who feels cheap. Well, you've only got yourself to blame, Slim. After all, what did I do? Nothing. What's more, you don't have to do anything. Oh, maybe just whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. No, Slim. I got a better use for my lips. <laughs> Come here and let me kiss you. All right, but first take that rose out of your teeth. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you know. I, I, I meant to put that in my lapel, in my lapel. Now, let, now let's, start the, the, let's start the scene over again. <clears throat> you're, uh, you're sore at me, aren't you, Slim? Sure, Steve, I'm sore at you. I wanted to get even. I brought that bottle up here to Who make you... brought what bottle up where? <laughs> Phil. Hello, Curly. Well, St. Peter must have left the gate open, and look who fell out. Well, thanks. Oh, leave a lamp burning in the window, Mother. I may be a little late. <laughs> Phil. Ah, oh, yes, there's good news tonight. Phil. Yeah. Well, introduce me, Jackson. Introduce me. All right, all right. This is Miss Lauren Bacall. Lauren, this is my colleague, Phil Harris. Well, hoity-toity, I'm a colleague now. Yeah. And yeah, now go already. Okay, okay. Now, come on, Lauren. Let's take that kissing scene again. Uh, we'll take that kissing scene again. Let's start where I... Hmm, who can that be? I left strict orders not to be disturbed. Mr. Benny, Mr. Humphrey Bogart's at the door. Humphrey Bogart? Oh, Jack, I forgot to tell you. Bogey said he dropped by here and picked me up. You know, he and I are married. I know. Uh, who do you think played the violin at your wedding? <laughs> <laughs> and, 
Anyway, he can wait outside. We got a scene to rehearse, and we're going to do it. Uh, hello, baby. Hiya, Jack. Look, Humphrey, we're right in the middle of the rehearsal. Oh, that's all right, Jack. Go right ahead. We won't be long, honey. That's all right, baby. You know, Jack, I'm glad to see you again. You're my favorite comedian. I am? Well, that's good. Now, Lauren, <clears throat> I mean, I mean, Miss Bacall. Oh, by the way, what should I call you? Lauren or Miss Bacall? Mrs. Bogart. <laughs> hmm. Now, let's get on with the rehearsal, Mrs. Bogart. Start with your, uh, starting with your last speech. Huh? Okay. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. No, Slim. I got a better use for my lips. Come here and let me kiss you. <laughs> what a comedian. What a comedian. <laughs> Look, Humphrey, I'm trying to... Mr. Rehe Benny, there's a telephone call for you. Oh. Well, pardon me a minute, folks. I'll be right back. How's it going, baby? Oh, brother. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Say, uh, baby, I want you to do something. What is it? When you get to kiss him, just put one arm around him and run your other hand through his hair. Why? I want to find out if he really wears one. <laughs> Hey, uh, what does Benny, what does Benny want to be a great lover for, anyway? Well, why shouldn't he? After all, he played a romantic lead and the horn blows at midnight. You saw that, didn't you? Yeah, and they called our last picture the big sleep. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, what's this sketch you're rehearsing with Benny? To have and have not. We're rehearsing the big scene you and I did in the picture. Oh? Which one of you is playing my part? <laughs> He's coming back. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to answer the phone, but, well, that's the price of fame. Who was it? Wrong number. <laughs> I mean, my, uh, my sponsor called because he sent me the wrong number of tickets to the broadcast. Now, let's uh, get on with the rehearsal, Lauren. We'll start with my line. Well, you've only got yourself to blame, Slim. After all, what did I do? Nothing. What's more, you don't have to do anything. Oh, maybe just whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. No, Slim. I got a better use for my lips. Come here and let me kiss you. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jack. Hold it. You're doing it all wrong. Wrong? Yeah. When you get ready to kiss a girl, you put your arms around her gently, tenderly. What? Yeah, you're not supposed to grab her by the earlobes and pull yourself up. <laughs> Oh, I see. And yeah, now watch me. Come here, baby. Read that line again. Okay. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. No, Slim. I got a better use for my lips. Come here and let me kiss you. Like this. Idea. I get the idea. That's enough, Humphrey. Look, you can do that at home. Look. <laughs> Humphrey, I'm paying her by the hour. <laughs> Stop! I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> I, uh... I get the idea now, Bogey. Uh, let you and I take it again, Lauren. Say, Jack, our gin rummy game's over, so I thought I'd come in here and watch you rehearse. All right, all right, but be quiet. Now, come on, Lauren. Start with your line again. Okay. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? <laughs> you just put your lips together and blow. Ah, Slim. I got a better use. <laughs> come here, I'll already kiss you. Like this. No, 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 Jack. No, no, you're doing it all wrong. Here, let me show you again. What? I'll do it with Mary this time. Are you ready, Mary? Am I ready? I was puckered up when I walked in here. 
But look, Mary isn't even... Come on, Mary. Come on, Mary. You take baby's line. Okay. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. Oh, no. I've got a better use for my lips. <laughs> Come here and, and let me kiss you. Like this. <laughs> Bogey, bogey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! What is this? What is this anyway? Step aside, Mary. I want to talk to Mr. Bogart. Yeah, and I want to talk to him, too. Dennis. Say, he's cute. You haven't got a chance, sister. I send all my Coca-Cola tops to Mary. <laughs> Danny, now listen to me, Bogart. I saw you kissing a woman I love, see? And you ain't muscling in on my racket, see? Those lips ain't big enough for the both of us, see? Now get out of here before you get hurt, see? Get out, see? Out, see? Out, see? Out! Dennis! See? <laughs> come on, baby, let's get out of here. This guy's tough. Bogart, Lauren, come back! Dennis! Dennis, I can't believe it. You know what you did? You frightened Humphrey Bogart. Sure. Dennis, what's that you got in your hand? A picture of my mother. Oh, no wonder. Gosh, now, Lauren will never be on my program. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, here's my good friend, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs. <laughs> Experts like Mr. Joyner can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Remember, year after year, L.S., M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart for appearing on my program tonight. They can currently be seen in their Warner Brothers picture, The Big Sleep. Well, I better rush home now. Oh, taxi, taxi. Oh, taxi. Oh, doorman, get me a taxi, will you? Look, bud, if you want a taxi, just whistle. What? You know how to whistle, don't you? <laughs> just put your lips together and blow. Oh, yes, yes. Well, what do you know? It works. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.